Good, oh, good afternoon, everyone. I thought it was still morning, but it is afternoon. And who knows, could be morning or evening where you are, but good afternoon. So, boy, I was thinking of all these things to talk about today because of, you know, current events, all the stuff going on. But then as soon as I start playing, I don't know, I'm just thinking about Minecraft. Um, let's go make another sword real quick because this one's almost dead. And I'm thinking of going to the nether and looking for that blaze rod because I really want to make a brewing stand. I think that'll be awesome. Oh, uh, we need a stick for that, huh? Do I have no wood? Huh, look at that. I've got no wood. Is there some in the furnace? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Look at that. We've got all kinds of all kinds of goodies here. Make one of those. Um and then oh yeah, I need to make a stick. Then make a sword. Do I need a pick? Nah, that I've got an extra pick. Yeah, I've got plenty of stuff. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 as they say. Let's put that back. So. I should actually wear a helmet. Let's wear this. Let's wear this helmet. We just need a plain helmet for now. But, uh, whoa. That's good to have on. There we go. So, Ukraine, I can't believe it. It's amazing that they are holding on so well against Russia. I mean, we don't really know. And, you know, um, there's so much control of the media. You know, um, Russia is being censored quite a lot in Western media. So we don't really know that side of the story. But we do know for sure that the major Ukrainian cities are not taken over yet. Because we can see that with our own eyes. Like, we can see the videos and all kinds of stuff. So definitely, Ukraine is doing better than anyone expected. Now, are these blazes? Is this where I get blaze rods? Whoa. Whoa. Don't want to get surrounded here. Is this where I get blaze rods? Whoa. Whoa. Oh my gosh, and there's lava right there. I, I need to be careful. I could have easily backed into that on accident. Or gotten knocked into it. Okay. Ooh, run. So yeah, Ukraine is doing fantastic in the war. And that is really impressive, right? But that's not what I wanted to talk about. Um, we were talking about just war and unjust war. And I think... When your when is what is your responsibility when you see an unjust war? Should you intervene? That's the big question. And I mean, I think I think we're doing okay right now. We're supplying Ukraine. We're giving them various kinds of support with supplies, uh, with censoring Russia, which I don't think I agree with that though. I don't think we should be censoring Russia. And I don't think we should be censoring or I don't know. I don't know if I like the idea of sanctions that affect just like regular everyday people, right? Like I don't think that the swift banking thing is that good. Removing Russian banks from swift. Um First of all, who is that really hurting, right? Russia is not trying to buy weapons from some other country using, you know, a check, like a regular bank check. So what is that really doing? I, as far as I know, 
it's really just hurting like Russian small businesses and big businesses and I, to some degree I guess you could say there's a lot of state control of those things so it is hurting the state but it's such a wide net because it's clearly hurting regular people more the state has other means they don't need swift they have treaties they have they have international partners who will give them credit right like if like whatever like let's say russia did want to buy a bunch of stuff from china well china is not enforcing sanctions against russia last i heard and so what that means is china's not going to say oh well since you're not part of swift and it's it's hard for you to send us bank transfers right now uh, oh well i guess we're just gonna wait no they're gonna be like yeah sure We'll send you a billion dollars worth of whatever widget you're, you need from our factories. And in exchange, uh, we'll take um, um, 50 million barrels of oil at $20 a barrel. Like a really nice discount. Like that's the kind of stuff that a, that, that level of, of bargaining can do, right? So if the Russian military wants to buy something from China, taking Russian banks out of SWIFT does not stop that in the slightest. So, so yeah, so I don't know if that's a good one. Now, freezing the central bank assets, that seems more, much more effective in hampering the state itself. That was a good move, albeit a scary move. I guess what that really is saying is that what we're is that Russia's actions are so bad that they are being removed from polite society essentially right that's kind of what's happening here and I guess the motivation for that is not just that we support Ukraine it's also a message to China that that makes sense to me what we're saying is look what happens China it's not just going to be military retaliation. We are going to do whatever we can to hurt your economy if you violate these modern social norms of invading a developed country that didn't actually do anything to hurt you. Like I said in another video, war can be justified. I mean, there's no question. that war can be justified, but it does have to be justified. That's kind of the the world we live in today. If, if you just go and invade a country, people don't like it. And so you have to have some justification that people will believe in. And then of course, you know, some people won't believe in it and that's fine. So the better your justification, the more people will believe in it. If you have a weak justification, then yeah, probably your allies will believe in it, but you're not going to convince the whole world. But if you have no justification, what we're showing is nobody is going to take your side, really. And so this, like I was saying, this is a big message to China with respect to Taiwan, right? We're saying, yeah, we know you could take over Taiwan, and yes, if you have a strong enough military, people might not even help Taiwan directly, right? China is banking on that. They're like, is America going to go to war over Taiwan? Really? It's almost impossible for America to do anything long term because Taiwan is it's right next to China. Like we're, we're not there. It's very difficult to project constant force on the other side of the world, right? And um, very expensive and right now, frankly, unpopular because, you know, we just got out of Afghanistan. So China knows that America is not going to go to war for Taiwan, even though we keep saying we will. I really don't believe it. But what we're showing is that 
the international community is willing to cut Russia out of polite society and to stop trading with them to the extent that they can, to cut them off financially, to isolate them, to censor them. And that would happen to China too. Now, I guess the question is, excuse me, right now it's really just Europe that depends on Russia due to energy. That's the main thing. And, and that's, of course, why they are excluding banks that are energy related. Oh my gosh, my armor all broke. Okay, let's go back to the nether. Why did I come over here again? I was just kind of talking and rambling and not thinking about what I was doing on Minecraft. But anyway. Yeah, so we're showing what can happen. And if it's bad enough, then China is going to reconsider. They're going to be like, okay, yeah, we can take over Taiwan, but is it worth it? Oh, yeah, and the other thing I was saying was, does China have a better position than Russia? That's entirely possible, you know? Um, so Europe needs Russian energy, and that's why energy segment of Russian economy has escaped sanctions, or at least most of them. And China does a lot more, right? People probably depend more on China than on Russian energy. I mean, definitely more people, because like almost every developed nation has a trade imbalance with China, which means that for many years, segments of the economy have been migrating over to China to, to save money. And at some point you kind of lose that knowledge and capability, you know, you just can't do it. Look at what happened in 2020 with um, things like face masks, right? That was all made in China. So much of it was made in China and they were like, well, we need this, we're gonna keep it. And <laughs> people couldn't do much about it except start spinning up their domestic textile industry again. So, um, Point being, there's a lot more that people depend on with China than with Russia. So maybe it would be similar, but if what Russia did is so bad that people don't forget it, then given enough time, there will be alternatives to Russian energy, right? So Europe is going to be investing in liquid natural gas terminals to get imports from the US. They're going to be investing more in renewable energy. Uh, Germany, I think, has canceled their plan to get off of nuclear energy, or at least delayed it, because they don't want to exacerbate their dependence on gas, right? And that's going to continue. And people are strongly motivated. I mean, it's unbelievable how much Russia has violated the faith of people. And that's what it was. They had faith in Russia that they're not going to do anything that crazy, right? They live in a, they live in this European society. Like Russia is part of our society now since the Soviet Union is gone. They trade with us. We've got common enemies, right? The last 20 years, the anti-terrorism and focus on turmoil in the Middle East and, and even Africa is kind of a unifying thing, right? Like, a lot of people had sympathy for Russia to some degree when it came to things like, I don't know, Chechnya, right? Because we were like, oh, you guys are dealing with religious radicalism 
which we understand. That's something. That's a common thing. So that that creates a shared culture and, and gives you trust in in the other country. But that's all gone. I mean, Russia made such a big mistake. And honestly, here's a question. Leave a comment if you know the answer to this. What is the difference between this and Russia taking over Crimea? I don't know. Why didn't the world react just as strongly then? Is it because they had that smoke screen of a plausible reason? They said, well, there's these, you know, Russian, there's Russians living there who are being abused, basically. That was their rationale, right? They're being oppressed by the Ukrainian government, and so we are going to recognize their independence and help them. And that's like what I was saying. Like, you have to have some justification, even if not everyone believes it. You have to have something. Because look at, is that the difference? Is that why nobody really did anything, right? Like, yeah, there were, there were some sanctions against Russia, but not like what we have now. Not even close. Um, so, well, yeah, what's the reason for that? Is it just that they had a pretext? And even if not everyone believed it, it was good enough. Let's put our string and stuff in inventory. And, oh yeah, I need to make my armor and then head to the nether. Oh, I've got some nice yellow flowers, dandelions. I wanted... Didn't I want red flowers, though? Let's see. Got it. We can put down a couple more. Boom. Beautiful. Beautiful flowers, Minecraft. Good job with that. That's a really nice touch. Um. Yeah, anyway, so is that the reason that Russia had a legitimate sounding reason? Or was it because the U.S. was more involved in the Middle East, right? There's a big difference between this 2022 and like 2014. Right? We were in Afghanistan and Iraq pretty heavily. We were still recovering from the 2009 financial crisis. Was there just no appetite for any kind of conflict with Russia? Even non-military, even just economic? I don't know. Where did the iron go? Let's make one of those, one of those, one of those. Put that on, put that on, put that on. Put this back. Look at that, we still have 26 iron. We're doing pretty good in the iron department. Um, you know what? I'm gonna put the the rubies and the or the emeralds and the gold in this one since I have all these gold armor. Let's put gold stuff over here. Now, where did I get that from? Twelve raw gold. I don't remember picking that up. Uh, what else was I gonna put in here? Oh yeah, emeralds. Um, in here I want to put. Right, cobblestone. Oh, we got a spider eye. We got some string. Good. You know what? More important than more meat would be this iron. Let's do that. And I need to get some wood. Let's grab some wood before we go to the nether. How about, we've definitely cleared out a lot of trees here and they don't seem to be regrowing. Does Minecraft automatically respawn trees? Like, do they spread 
or not? I don't know the answer. It gives you, they drop saplings, so maybe they're expecting you to actually plant the saplings. I don't know. Well, to come back to the discussion, intervention probably doesn't make sense right now because what's happening in Ukraine, I don't know if it reaches the level where intervention becomes a necessity, you know? Morally speaking, like, if Russia just starts, like, leveling cities and killing indiscriminately, then maybe the world does need to intervene. I mean, I don't know. It's That's hard to say. I, I think it's the kind of thing that you just have to see, and then you know. It, it's hard to make a rule about it. There's a lot of things like that in life, of course. You can't... You can't make rules about every eventuality because things are not that straightforward. Sometimes. I mean, sometimes they are, but a lot of times they're not. Looks like it's nighttime, so let's hit the sack. But yeah, if, if Russia starts doing really crazy things, then I think the world would need to intervene. I mean, a lot of people are talking about, oh, what is that? Oh, raiders. And, oh, gosh, they've all got crossbows. Oh, no. Okay, I better not hide in here. I need to I need to run away and lead them away from my base. Come on, guys. Follow me way over this way. Hello. Hey, I have a bow. Oh, did I put it in a chest? Wait a minute, they're not. Are they gonna sit at my base? For real? I've never seen this in Minecraft, so I'm not sure, but it kind of looks like... Why aren't they shooting? So I can just stand here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, okay, now they see me. That was really bizarre. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on, guys. Away from my base, please. Away from my... Whoa. Oh, goodness. Okay, I need to build something here. Like, I need to build a hallway. Oh my gosh, they're fast. What do I do? Okay, if I can if I can separate them, I can take them on one at a time. I wish I had that bow. No, no, no. Come back. Come on. Don't rejoin your buddies. I'm going to I'm going to take you out, man. Come on. And then I'll take your crossbow. Okay, whew. Divide and conquer, right? What I was gonna say was I wanna build like a, a, a quick little like funnel. Let's see if we can do that. Like this. And then we're gonna build over here. Like this. And then I can just stand here and fight one at a time. And actually, let's build up this wall a little bit. Like that. So now if I can get them to come here, I should be able to fight them. Let's make this a little bigger. I'll lead them over to here. Okay. Goodness. All 
Okay, let's go find them. Oh gosh, imagine if I get stuck in foliage. Um, oh, where did they go? Did they go like all the way back to my base or something? At least I was able to take out one of them. And now I have a crossbow so I can hit one of them and encourage him to follow me, you know? Okay. They're gone. All right, let's look around. They've got to be around here somewhere. Did they all like fall down? They followed me up here, I believe. Where are they? Huh. Oh well. Huh, oh well. I thought I had a good idea there, but I guess I lost them. Did they go up here somehow? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> what was I talking about? Um. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. There's another thing I wanted to talk about, though. And that is a funny thing I heard. Kind of related to what I was saying about the pretext for war. And it was this. Um forget what podcast this was on, but the guest said logic and reason were not invented or discovered or, de sorry, developed. Logic and reason were not developed to seek the truth. They were developed to justify our existing beliefs. I think that's a very, that might be too strong of a statement, because obviously logic and reason have enormous benefit for survival. And so that's probably not right. But it's an interesting thought. And, you know, there's so many examples of logic and reason being used for that for, for forever throughout history. It's always been like that. But that's the beautiful thing about science. The scientific method, rather. It's constructed to help you avoid that pitfall. And it's, you know, this whole idea that it's okay to be wrong because we have a goal of wanting to get closer to the truth. And so truth becomes something we seek and we acknowledge that we don't necessarily have. Right? And that's kind of like the core of science. Whereas back with, for instance, I don't know, like the ancient Greeks, they had a lot of theories. I think they get too much flack, though. Like, yeah, they had a lot of things wrong, like the stuff about the elements being earth, air, water, fire, or whatever. I don't know exactly. I think those were like the main elements, right? Like, yeah, that's wrong, but... It's also the right idea, you know? It is a it's it is correct to say we can break down substances into constituent substances and it's the combination of those basic elements that determine the properties of matter, not it's not that there's a wood particle and a grass particle and a dirt particle and they're all just there. It's, you know, they're made out of the same stuff, ultimately, which is really amazing. So, I don't know. So, even, yeah, even when you think about it, maybe that statement is way too strong. Like, I don't think people only use logic and reason to justify their beliefs. I don't think that's ever been the case where they only use it for that. Or even mostly. You know, people are always trying to find something better. Find some truth. 
but truth is a weird thing you know especially today there's all this emphasis on you know what do they call it like lived truth basically that people have their own truth that is not true <laughs> you don't have your own truth uh, when I was growing up you know there was a difference between subjective and objective and there are yeah I mean I okay I, I didn't say that right people do have their own truth but they have to understand that that is a subjective thing and then it becomes truth like you can say chocolate is the best ice cream flavor that's not a truth in the absolute terms but it can be a truth in absolute terms just by modifying it and acknowledging the subjectivity and saying chocolate is the best ice cream to me like yeah that could be true it could be false I could be lying but I'm gonna presume that that's true if somebody says that and that is actual fact you know that is fact because we added to me if, um, it's just a subjective evaluation of ice cream flavors and that is completely legitimate but yeah what is the truth in a more in a complicated situation like Russia and Ukraine there are truths like Russia is not controlling major cities yet that's something that I don't think can really be shielded by propaganda like I believe that when I see those videos and so I say that is true um, can we say that ju that Russia was completely unjustified in invading that's more complicated I don't know that from what I've heard no they're not justified because um, you know the fear that that Ukraine joins NATO is not enough of a threat that's something I was talking about like yeah it's understandable that Russia wouldn't like that just like if Canada wanted to join a military alliance with China we wouldn't like that but just because we don't like something does not mean we can uh, go to war over it right like it has to be a justifiable action and yes it increases the threat to us but I guess at some point um, I don't know it, that that's complicated but what I was gonna say is at some point nature is not constant right like nothing in nature is constant and things change and you have to understand the reasons why it's changing so why would Canada join a military alliance with China why would they do that is it because America has done something to Canada in this hypothetical world do we have some major conflicts with Canada that justify their seeking defense from China would we be um, objective enough to recognize that and say well we need to think about why Canada is doing this I think that's what Russia should have done right Russia should be like yeah Ukraine joining NATO would be really annoying for us on the other hand we did just annex land from them right like on the other hand let's think about it from their perspective a little bit we took over their country or part of their country Wow, I've got so much melon. I need to craft that melon into blocks and trade it with my farmer buddy real quick. Let's do that. We'll get we'll pick up some emeralds. Now, am I just justifying my existing beliefs? Am I just looking for an excuse of you know?
why we can say Russia is wrong, but America would be right. Like if Canada wanted to join a military alliance with China and we hadn't done anything to threaten them or hurt them or do anything like that, then we might say, well, Canada does not have a legitimate reason. And so we are justified in preventing that and considering it like a preemptive defense to attack them, right? That's kind of like how you think about these preemptive strikes for your defense about a hypothetical that hasn't happened yet. It's flimsy, but it's that pretext like I was saying earlier. Like you need some pretext, otherwise you're gonna be abandoned by the world. Like no one will believe you, you'll have no support. Would that be enough? Is, is that all I'm doing? I don't think so. I don't know. Come on, farmer dude. Okay, let's let's combine these into melon blocks. Wait, 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 what? No. How do I do this? Take half, take half, take half? Is that? Oh, I guess I need the crafting table. Let's go to the crafting table. Um, yeah, but there's so many points people bring up with this Russia-Ukraine conflict about why it's different from how other conflicts have been treated. First one that I thought of was, why is it different from 2014, right? What is this dude doing? The What was that? Was he trying to use the crafting table? I don't think so. Um... I just go here, okay. Oh, so you have to fill it up, I see. Uh, yeah, let's craft some of that. Now go to our farmer. Yeah, so there's why is it different from last time? And you know, we thought of a couple reasons. I don't know what which one is correct. Or, you know, so we what were we saying? It could be that America and Europe, to be fair, were more involved in other conflicts, and so there just wasn't as much bandwidth to focus on Russia. So Russia was kind of taking advantage um, of that lack of attention, lack of extra resources. Or was it the other thing that they had a better pretext that people kind of understood? They're like, um, yeah, there are Russians living there and I don't know, maybe they have a point. Or another thing could be The world has changed socially and there's a lot more of this type of activism like if people don't like something they want to cancel right that's cancel culture russia is being canceled they put pressure people put pressure on companies to cut ties like Visa and MasterCard are not operating in Russia. Now see, that's an example. Like, I don't think that's a good. I think that's going too far. Do we have a conflict with the everyday people of Russia? Right? Visa can't Visa pulling out of or oh, sorry, I think MasterCard is bigger in a lot of international things. So MasterCard pulling out of Russia is not hurting Putin. It's indirectly hurting him by causing people to be upset. But it's directly hurting people. Like just regular Russian people. A lot of them also don't support the war. Right? There's there's Russians be, that are protesting at great risk to themselves because of you know the severity of the Russian state. They're out there protesting at great risk to themselves, and we're like, yeah, we're taking away your credit cards. Uh, you're going to be blocked on Facebook. You don't get to buy iPhones. Like, that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's good. It doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. I don't know. Leave a comment. What do you think? Do sanctions that hurt just everyday normal people, are they justified because they also indirectly hurt the state? I don't know. 
I don't know. On the other hand, on the other hand, I mean, yeah, this is Putin's fault. I'm not trying to say that our sanctions are unjustified. I'm just not sure if they're completely justified. Like, there's no doubt that this is Putin's fault. And ultimately, that means that if people don't like not having MasterCard, they should place some of that blame on Putin. I would agree with that. But... Is that good enough? Is that good enough? I don't know. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't support all of those sanctions, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's another possibility is that the world is just different now and that there's so much more corporate and personal activism about political issues that this is just what happens. You know, it's not... It's not just from the American state or the European states that the response is different. It's a different response from people, too. Yeah, it's definitely possible. But anyway, so there are differences with other conflicts, like, um, you know, if you watch videos on YouTube and you look at the comments, people will say, oh, why isn't there this concern about Yemen, right? There's there's like all these wars and conflicts going on that people don't really think about day to day. At least people in um, in the West. And to some degree, that's a fair point, right? Like you have to admit that that is true. But one thing I don't like is they they make it like the people who say that typically will claim that it's due to some kind of racism that people don't care about those places because of race and that I disagree with and I would say there are some really big differences that you have to consider um, that are not racism although racism is a one way to look at it I think it's First of all, if you look at the countries that are really involved, like people are saying, oh, Poland has no problem accepting refugees from Ukraine, but they didn't want refugees from Syria. That's racism. And it's like, no, that's not racism. That ignores a lot of nuance with the shared history of Poland and Ukraine as former Soviet states who don't want to be under Russian control anymore, right? They have history with that, and they understand what's happening. They have um, a border, like a direct border. So refugees from Ukraine have to go to one of the... They have to go through some country, right? And one of the criticisms with the Syrian refugee crisis was... They're going a long way. They're going through a lot of countries that are not at war, which kind of indicates that they don't want to ever go back. I think most of the Ukrainian people leaving Ukraine, they do not want to abandon Ukraine. They are just getting out of the way of the war. And the fact that they have this law that men aged, I think it's like 16 to 60 or something, are not even allowed to leave, right? They're not even allowed to leave. That shows what Ukraine is trying to do. And so it's a lot easier for a country to say, yeah, you can send women and children and you're gonna fight the war. And when the war is over, they're gonna go back because the men are all still there. The families are all, like the families want to be together again. So it's a, such a different situation that reducing it to like, oh, Poland racists, like that's so silly. Well, nighttime. Anyway, that's my opinion on that. I'm sure there is also racism involved because that is a, another difference and people 
do have an easier time identifying the more things you have in common the easier it is to identify so you have to look at language right if you have a shared language you're just you're gonna be closer to that country than to a country with a different language uh, a shared alphabet right so even if you speak a different language I would say America probably feels like it has closer ties with France than with Ukraine simply because Ukraine uses Cyrillic like that's just one possible reason you know there's many reasons but alphabet is one of them like when you go somewhere and you can't even read the alphabet it's like these people are very different from us right and that doesn't mean that you don't want to help them but it does mean that they are different like that's just part of human nature is to note differences and similarities and then how you act on those that's what determines whether it becomes something like racism or not if you say oh i can't read their alphabet i hate them then you know that's obviously not good but it does mean you could say oh we we don't have a common language or alphabet they would not fit in as well here as in another country that has a more similar culture and so i to me that's legitimate that's not racism that's just like noting facts about people and the differences between people so that's one thing that really annoys me with a lot of the comments that i've read about the conflict another thing that annoys me is media trying to get these really emotional moments and it's very exploitative like there there was this i think it was abc reporter at the border with poland and ukraine and he was like you know it was a really good show overall it was really well done but he goes up to these kids like carrying stuffed animals and all that very you know very touching but he kept asking these kids like is your dad back in ukraine what do you think about that and he like he just wants them to cry basically but what you, you know you ask a five-year-old like literally this there's like a five-year-old carrying a stuffed animal and he's like so your dad is back in ukraine fighting the russians what do you think it's like dude he just wants to see the kid cry to to get you know views on a video or something that was i thought that was pretty gross why didn't this turn into bone meal when i did that did i not click it there there we go beautiful you've all got food you can all make melons um yeah so i guess the, the topic i've been going on was things that i wish were better about the war obviously given that there is the war because that would be the best thing is that, you know if russia stopped everyone's saying that there's this like irreparable harm i don't believe that i don't think so i don't think russia has crossed that line yet where people cannot forgive them but if they keep going and they start doing some of the things they're capable of then it will then it's going to be like the cold war right if they kill hundreds of thousands of people in order to take over these cities then there will be no relationship with russia until something as drastic as the end of the cold war war when their empire fell apart and they lost half their territory and was split up into these little states and all. i mean that's major that's major and that takes a long time 
but I don't think that I don't think they're at that point. If if they just left Ukraine, I think relations would normalize. They might have to get rid of Putin. If they got rid of Putin and left Ukraine, relations would definitely normalize. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. And Yeah, that would not be that hard for them to do, in my opinion. Um, I, I guess there would be people who want, like, really hard continuing sanctions on Russia. I don't think that would, I don't think that would happen. I don't think there's any appetite for that. Because at that point, it is just gratuitously hurting Russian civilians, you know, and people would... People would come to realize that and stop supporting it. So that's the, the way out of this, I think. It, it feels like that could really happen, that Russia withdraws and Putin resigns or does something like that. Or maybe, boy, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Putin might not be willing to do that. He might not care about his legacy, about how history views him, about whether he's really doing the best thing for Russia. I don't know. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the nether and look for a blaze rod. Try to kill those blazes. I think those are blazes. And I guess you just eventually get a blazer i just need to kill like hundreds of them maybe um there's the emerald boy i've got so much junk in my inventory i'm gonna plant the sapling so that we you know start renewing this resource of trees near our base let's put you right there Oh, I shouldn't have done it there. That's an annoying spot when you have to go around a tree while you, while you're also going up. That's kind of annoying. So, hmm, the coffee's almost gone too. Uh oh, something got me for a second. I thought they did. All right, let's go after those blazes. Here's one. Whoa. Hey, they don't get hurt by those magma stones, huh? Magma blocks. Here's the big boy. Whoa. Why isn't he dying? Usually they break up after like a couple hits. Whoa! Holy smokes! Oh my gosh! And my sword broke at the same time. Oh my gosh! <gasps> I can't get away. Okay. Let me grab my backup sword. Whoa! This is harder than I expected, but okay, we're we're fine. Oh, look at that. If I can trap them down there, then it's easy. Look at that. Oh my gosh, he still hit me, though. That's funny. He's a fighter. Well. Come on. Come on, land in the lava. Oh, it doesn't hurt them. Nice. I should probably fill in... Oh, how'd they get behind me like that? Oh, they just spawn here, huh? I think that guy just spawned, even though it's light here. 
Oh, I guess the spawn rules are different in the nether. Whoa, I almost backed into that lava. I need... Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. If I can get them all on one side of me... Whoa! I think I'm okay. Boy. Oh my goodness. Oh, whoops. Oh, sorry, dude. No, 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 I didn't mean to. Oh, I'm dead. Let me try to get through this portal. Oh, I can't even get through it. <gasps> run, run. Okay, I led them away from the portal and now... Ooh, oh my goodness. Ah! No! They all came through the portal? And now they're chilling at my farm? Well, let's go to sleep. We'll gra go grab our stuff. Hopefully it all survived. At least I made it through the portal first. Oh, well, that was bad. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can pick up some stuff. Got some stuff. Yep, got some armor. Whoa. Why am I not picking it all up? I ran through it. Okay. Interesting, they don't get hurt by sunlight either. I guess, unlike zombies and... It seems like most creatures do. Okay, put on our armor. Oh, I lost my gold helmet! Ah. You're catching my crops on fire? Dude, come on. Oh well, that wasn't too bad. Whew. Definitely lightened my inventory a little bit, which is nice. I can... Oh, there's another one. Okay, so I think we're gonna wrap it up soon. I don't wanna talk about politics too much, although it, it's just that that's the current event, you know? That's what I'm talking about because that's what's going on in the world right now. And so I'm kind of inundated with it, you know? Hear it on the news all the time, you read about it, so much, so many YouTube videos are about it. I hope you don't mind. I hope I don't offend anybody. I'm not trying to offend you. If you have a different opinion than me, that is totally fine. Because I'm not an expert. I don't feel like I am so certain about what's going on that I, there's no way I'm wrong about anything, right? Um, yeah, okay. I'm gonna head back to my base. And I'm gonna do some research about blaze rods, because we actually killed quite a few creatures. Like, we probably killed three or four of those big ones, you know, and then they split into all those little things. So we killed, like, 20 or 30 little ones. And we got a bunch of magma cream, whatever that is for. We did not get a blaze rod, so maybe this is the wrong approach. I'm not sure. But, hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments about those questions I asked. Why is this conflict different from A, last time Russia invaded Ukraine, and B, from other conflicts? Why do you think it's different? And let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Bye.